All right, welcome to our last video in our talk about information security, and this one is my absolute favorite. This was not covered in the curriculum, but it is very important that we talk about it. This is going to be social engineering, and there are two quotes that are phenomenal. The first one is, social engineering is perhaps the hacker's favorite weapon of choice. Kevin Mitnick. If you don't know who Kevin Mitnick is, he was one of the most famous hackers, crackers back in the day. He was arrested by the FBI. It served some time, uh, but he is considered a master hacker, cracker. Most of his work was done via social engineering. So it's pretty interesting as far as that goes. The next quote, which is quite funny and, and true, is social engineering because there's no patch to human stupidity. So what is social engineering? Well, first of all, let's say that you get this image on your computer. Bump. Bum, bum. I mean, look at this. This is some serious, serious stuff. Cybersecurity, FBI, Department of Defense, USA, Cyber Crime Center. There's a picture of President Obama pointing at you. Look, attention, your browser has been blocked up for safety reasons listed below. All activities of this computer have been recorded. <gasps> All your files are encrypted. You are accused of viewing, storing, and or dissemination of banned pornography. Dun, dun, dun. I mean, this is some serious stuff. You have violated world declaration of non-proliferation. I mean, this is some scary stuff. And all you have to do it to make it right, to make sure that President Obama, who's pointing at you in that picture, isn't going to come for you with the FBI and the U.S. Cyber Crime Center and the Department of Defense, the Marines busting down your door. The only way you can make absolutely sure you don't go to jail right now is to send $300 via a money pack. Huh? This is exactly what we're talking about. This is a scam. This is social engineering at its best. And even as fake, I mean, look at the words. The grammar's horrible. Even as fake as this is, people will still send $300 in order to avoid this because the wording is very inflammatory. I mean, we're talking about some pretty nasty stuff here as far as what they're talking about on your computer. This is social engineering. It is manipulating people in order to get them to do something you want. So social engineering is the act of manipulating people into performing actions or divulging confidential information. There are a couple of types of social engineering. There is dumpster diving. There is shoulder surfing. There is tailgating. I mean, this almost kind of like sounds fun. You're diving. Yay. Our first Olympic event is dumpster diving, followed by shoulder surfing, followed by a party with the tailgating, and of course, spam and fishing. Let's talk about what this is. Dumpster diving is exactly what it sounds like. And I said earlier, a great movie to go watch is Hackers Love the Movie. Go see it. It's a classic. It's very funny now when you compare technology then to now. But they even show dumpster diving. What you're doing is you're searching through trash looking for information. Pieces of data on their own aren't that big of a deal. But if you get enough pieces of data and put them together, they form a coherent picture. You can get some interesting information by pieces of data that nobody thinks are that important. And so by dumpster diving, you're getting that information. You're putting pieces together. You're building up information about who you're going after. How do you stop it? Well, the first thing you can do is use a shredder. You want to shred all your documents. Now, depending on your use of the shredder, you have consumer level shredders and you have Department of Defense shredders. And it all depends on how much of confetti you're going to make. One of the things you definitely want to do is get a cross cut shredder. What happens is it cuts it like this and it cuts it like this. And so you get little pieces of confetti. You also want to lock, if possible, where the trash is placed outside. So that would be dumpster diving. The next one is shoulder surfing. This is when you're looking over people's shoulder at private data. Big danger spots on this one are airports and coffee shops. And it's kind of fun if you try this. And I have, I've, I had to teach this to the FBI cyber guys. And so I had some fun 
giving explanations and giving examples of this. I had a fly into BWI lots of times. That's the Baltimore airport. I've also had a fly into Reagan Airport, which is in D.C. Reagan Airport and BWI are full of federal people. That's full of FBI folks, full of DEA folks, full of military folks, full of a lot of people that should be very careful with their data. And it's more more than often, you'd run across somebody and they're on their laptop looking at stuff that identifies them. And you're going, wow, I can't believe you're watching that right here. So shoulder surfing, be careful at airports, be careful at coffee shops. There are ways to prevent shoulder surfing. One, keep your back to the wall. Find a chair where there's nothing behind you except the wall. It kind of prevents anybody from getting behind you. Use a filter over a screen. There are screens you can buy which keep people from seeing stuff from the left or from the right. Now, the problem with this is if you have a screen, it screams, I've got something really cool on my computer screen that people should be looking at. So it makes you a target. Also, close your laptop lid. If you suspect somebody is kind of looking over your shoulder, close your lid. It's usually a hint that you know they're there and they might go off and go somewhere else. And of course, the most important lesson in shoulder surfing is don't do anything that's private in a public place. You want to keep your private stuff private. The next one is tailgating. This is infiltration. You are entering a business pretending that you're supposed to be there. You're entering in the guise of legitimacy. You can get official looking uniforms. They're not that hard to get. You can get police uniforms, firemen uniforms. You can look like a cable guy, a telephone repair guy, or the person who can get into any building. I don't care how secure it is. The pizza guy. I mean, everybody lets in the pizza guy. So you dress up as a pizza guy. You've got a box. You get a pizza. Boom. You can get in anywhere. Bad guys rely on looking and acting the part. You have to look the part. You have to act the part. And most people won't check you. In fact, once you get past an initial checkpoint, you have pretty much free reign of the entire area. Now, I will share this story with you as far as tailgating and how I managed to basically social engineer and tailgate the FBI Academy. When I was doing my trainings out there, I was not at that point in time an FBI employee. I was still a contractor and I was teaching this course on social engineering and I had a really good class, but they were like, yeah, please, blah, blah, we, we're secure, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I'll make you a bet. I bet you every day this week I can get from the door, the front door, to this classroom without an ID, without an escort. And they were like, yeah, sure. Every day of that week, what did I do? I walked in with boxes, okay? I walked in with a nice uh, suit on. I looked the part. Everybody in the bureau wears suits. Don't ask me why, we just do. So I would wear a suit, look the part, short haircut, look very professional, nice shoes, okay? And I would carry boxes, and they looked heavy. And I'd carry them in front of my chest, which is where my ID would hang if I was an employee. And I walked in with boxes. Well, naturally, when you see somebody walking towards the door, and let's say you're ahead of them, you're going to hold the door open for them. It's just common courtesy. And so not only did I get from point A back to the classroom every day that week, I had people holding the door for me. So I, it was even easier than once I was an employee because once you're an employee, you open your own doors. But I'm carrying boxes from point A all the way back to the classroom. Not a problem. So it's fairly simple to do. People, no matter who you are, we have this urge to be courteous. We don't want to confront people. And so tailgating is fairly simple to do. And by the way, in case you're watching and you are from the FBI or you're from law enforcement, I did disclose this on my entrance interview. And so they were fully aware of it. In fact, I talked to the security guys about improving that part of security. So I'm covered. Anyways, how do you stop it? Have multiple checkpoints. Have multiple checkpoints along the way. The average person doesn't want to stop somebody and say, do you belong here? Have multiple checkpoints. Have People whose jobs it is along the way to be jerks and say, I need ID, I need ID, I need ID. Use revolving doors, use man traps. The FBI building, the proper building, uh, the Hoover building, has man traps. And so they already have this problem taken care of. One person at a time, door closes, one side closes, the other side opens. So you can't have multiple people 
go through it once. Escort all non-employees. If you don't work there, you should have somebody escorting you at all times. And also, keep secured areas locked and assume unauthorized people are wandering the halls. So assume people are walking your halls who shouldn't be there. Just make that assumption. People are in your building who don't belong there. Secured areas, lock them up. So a hallway might not be secure, but let's say you have another room with stuff in there that you don't want people seeing. Have that room also locked up separately. So tailgating, kind of cool stuff there. Miscellaneous social engineering tips. Do not wear company badges outside the office. If you're in downtown DC, there is a game where you're spotting the badges. For some reason, people feel important if they're walking around with their badge on. You know why it's a bad idea? This is why it's a bad idea. Let's say you want to hack that building. Let's say you want to get inside that building. You have a cell phone now. You take a picture of a person with a badge on, you can now blow up that image. I mean, these things are shooting at such high res. You blow up that image. Now you can make your own fake ID badge. So don't wear your badges outside of the office. Not to mention, you make yourself a target. So don't do that. Hide your badge once you leave the building. Also, watch out for your car window stickers. They can give away your general location of your home or business. So, for example, let's say that you belong to a health club and the health club gives you a sticker for your car. We can guesstimate where you work or where you live if we know where the health club is. So watch out for that. Also, right now, making the blogosphere, making social media is about people with those family pictures on their car. It tells people how many people are in your family. Why would you want to give somebody that information? You don't know me. I might be driving behind you. I might be stalking you. You don't want to tell me how many people in your family. Hide that information. Also, next one, keep junk in the car a minimum. You don't want to show your address in your car. You don't want to have an envelope sitting there with your information or pay stub. That's really bad. Also, Google yourself. See what's out there on you. Google yourself and see what you can find. The next topic is spam. Kind of funny side note, spam got its name from an old Monty Python skit where they were talking about eating spam and it was just everywhere. Vikings singing spam, spam, spam. Check it out. It's on YouTube. Uh, spam is unwanted email. Uh, watch out for the unsubscribe button. I use mass marketing. In fact, for these videos, I'm using mass marketing to send it to college professors and high schools across the United States about the free videos. Because I'm using Constant Contact for my provider, there's an unsubscribe button. That's a legitimate unsubscribe button. If you don't want emails from me, you click the button, you're unsubscribed. Spam, spam. Like some of the really bad spam, those unsubscribe buttons can actually be bad links or links to viruses. So you want to watch out for that. Also, be aware of who you give your email out to. Because Mr. Ford's class is so out there, because we're well known, I receive so much spam every day. It's just part of the job. Here's another little funny one. This is called bacon. No, that's not a mistype. That's actually how we say it. That's how we write it. Bacon are emails you subscribe to, but you really don't read it. So you get newsletters and you're like, oh, I, uh, I don't have time to read it now. I'll read it later. But you subscribe to it, but you really aren't looking at it. The next concept is phishing, also part of our social engineering. You're trying to get information from people. This is the attempt to acquire sensitive information, such as username, passwords, and credit card details, by masquerading as a trustworthy entity in an electronic communication. I will tell you right now, there is nobody in Nigeria who has millions of dollars for you if you send them your information. Uh, you get some pretty convincing phishing emails. For example, apparently I am wanted to go to trial in several different states, even though they never put my name there. If I only open the attachment, I'll get the details. I have had background checks done on me. All I gotta do is click on this link to open up the email. Some are pretty convincing. Uh, PayPal, I've had a fraud on my PayPal. Click here for more information. I've had fraud on credit cards I don't even have. So they are pretty convincing. If you're in doubt, Google it. If you take the first sentence or if you take the subject and you Google it, usually those things show up. Spear phishing, I'm not making these words up. These are actually words out there. 
Spear fishing is when you're going after specific targets. So you're not throwing out this huge uh, blanket, this huge net to get everybody. You might be going after individuals at an organization. So for example, let's say that you want to attack a realtor office. You're going to figure out their usernames, their emails. You're going to send it to those folks trying to get information from a specific target. The next one's whale fishing. Again, these exist. Whale fishing is when you go after large targets. So, for example, you're going after CEOs, you're going after politicians, celebrities, etc. All right. Had a lot of fun with the social engineering. Hope you've enjoyed it. Let's talk about a few, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, give you a little bit extra of sites to check out if you want to know more. The first one is the Internet Storm Center. If there's something big happening on the Internet, if there's some massive virus or a worm or threat, these guys are going to talk about it. We talked about SANS. They're the security experts. Snort, this is a pretty cool free program. It can help you bypass web pretty quickly. A really interesting podcast. This is called Security Now. They have a podcast on security issues, computer issues. It gets pretty geeky uh, as far as how they cover their information, but still worth listening to. Internet Crime Complaint Center. If you are the victim of internet fraud or internet uh, bad stuff that happens, you want to probably register a complaint with them. This is a joint operation. The FBI are part of it, and they track internet crime statistics. Hack 5, this is also some good podcasts and videos related to computer technology, hacks, things like that. And also, I would say this next one is mandatory for on Facebook. It's called Face Crooks. You see a lot of scams on Facebook. You know, the this is happening or this child had been attacked by this person and one click equals one like or for every click, Bill Gates will give a dollar or what have you. Those are all it's fake. Those are all spam. I would check out Face Crooks. They usually have some pretty good information on the latest scams, schemes, things like that. Also, when you're in doubt about a topic, when you're in doubt about a, you know, this virus or this out there, Google it. See what you find out there. Okay, that concludes internet security, information security. This concludes our look at lesson six. In lesson seven, we're going to take a look at some other really cool stuff digital media. Until then, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to click subscribe, like the video. It helps our ratings and we'll see you later. Bye-bye for now.